Welcome to this fifth part in this video tutorial series about the OpenGL API. In the previous part, we worked with translation and this was our output. So in this part, we're first going to learn about the third dimension uh, and then I'll show you how to set up a projection so that you can view your 3D world. So uh, first thing we need to make some changes to the program that we currently have here uh, to uh, make the to avoid any confusion in the things that we're going to learn today um, you have to comment all of the animation code so just comment all of this code uh, and also remove the any translation that you were doing and i'll also draw this uh, square in a single color so i'll remove all the color commands except the first one so now you can build it and check this uh, if you've made the changes right. So this is it. Um, so now let's talk about the third dimension. So if you have worked with the 3D coordinate geometry, uh, you'll be quite comfortable with the things that we're going to learn now. Uh, if you've not, uh, it'll take a bit, a bit of time before you get experience to it. Um, so you just have to be patient and uh, it takes time getting used to the 3d coordinate system if you've not yet worked in the third axis so this is the 3d coordinate system uh, it has x y and z axes and the third axis is the z axis like uh, the, uh, a square is a two-dimensional object uh, but a cube is a three dimension now it has a third dimension which is in addition to le length and breadth like a square has equal sides and then there's the height so that is the third new dimension so similar way uh, here in the 3d world that we have inside our api we have the x-axis then we have the y-axis um, now these lie in the plane of your screen so this is towards the right side sorry this is y-axis and the y-axis points upwards and the positive z-axis points outwards so this is the positive z-axis and uh, in into your screen is the negative z-axis so you have to all you have to do is remember that the um, coming out of the screen is the positive z-axis and going into the screen is the negative z-axis and the x and y-axis will be as, as usual as we have used so far now uh, you have to use three coordinates to specify a point uh, inside the 3d world so like first you have to specify the x position of a point and then you have to specify the y position of the point and then you have to specify its depth like uh, you have to specify a point and then its depth which is the z coordinate so it lies somewhere in your 3d world so that is how you specify a point inside the api you need three vertices now uh, if you look at the function calls to um, specify the vertices we use the vertex 2f function which specifies uh, two coordinates for each point so instead now we'll use the vertex 3f function which also allows you to add an, an additional argument which is the z coordinate now this uh, what i just did here uh, didn't make any difference because uh, if you use the vertex 2f call uh, the vertex is always specified in a 3d format but uh, if you use the vertex 2f function the z coordinate is automatically set to zero by your API so all the changes I made here didn't uh, make any difference so uh, I can do this to all of these because now we we're gonna need to use the Z coordinate as well but I'll initially set this to zero here this is not uh, make any difference if you want to check you can build it on your application and see that um, it doesn't create any difference really So uh, now you know how to specify a point inside the 3D space. Um, now the next thing is viewing, viewing your objects inside the space. Now just as you specify, uh, just as you draw a square here. Now if you look at the geometry and map this uh, geometry onto your screen, uh, onto the coordinate system, you'll find that it represents a square. I'm sorry, I'll draw it in a different color. Uh, a square which is placed at the origin it, the center of the square is at the origin 
this is the place the square is at now you can similar uh, in, in a similar way using the coordinates you can specify various objects which are located at different points so each object can be located um, using the set of three coordinates that you have to use here so now the next thing is that you have to specify a particular criteria which uh, will tell the api how the objects inside the scene are viewed it's not like uh, you have every object inside the scene um, the user cannot see all the objects at a single time um, so that is specified using using the projection now projection will determine which uh, of the how the scene is viewed um, and which objects are clipped inside the screen and which are clipped out so now to get a basic idea of the projection you need to just imagine that you're standing right here at the origin and now into the screen is the negative z-axis which is this side so imagine you're looking into the screen means you're looking to the negative z-axis so now this will be the range in which you'll be able to view so this is actually called a view frustum now you can see the rays diverging this is a uh, how a human perceives the images which are, which are in front of him this type of projection which in which the rays diverge is called a perspective projection because uh, in this case if you have two objects lying on the z-axis which are of the same size but are at different distances from the observer um, the one which is closer will appear bigger to the observer and the one which is further away will appear smaller this projection is called the perspective projection now if you want to have a better look at it these diagrams will help you understand now this is the orthographic projection which we used in the previous part we do not need to worry about that right now we'll uh, study about in, it in detail in the upcoming parts so let's first have a look at the perspective projection so this is the observer and this is the negative z-axis this is the observer or you can call it a camera it is always centered at the origin and it is always looking towards the negative z-axis now in OpenGL you need to specify some parameters which determine this frustum now frustum is a pyramid which has been cut off from a place so you can see this is our view frustum this much the near clip plane and the far clip plane in included um, and this inside area comes inside the view frustum and all the objects inside this are visible um, You need to note that the objects which are nearer than the near clip plane will also not be visible. The objects which are nearer than the near clip plane will also not be visible. And the objects which are farther away will also not be visible. Only the objects lying between these. And if an object like this green ball lies out of the view frustum, it will also not be visible. So only the objects present inside this frustum will be visible. So like this yellow ball and this red ball. Now the yellow ball is more closer to the observer. So it'll appear bigger when it is projected. So now you can uh, imagine the nuclear plane as a screen onto which all of the scene inside this uh, frustum is projected. You can imagine it uh, like this. All of the scene is projected onto the screen and you're standing here and now you're viewing this screen. So this is, uh, you can imagine this as a viewport of uh, viewport that, that, that is present inside your window. So all of the scene is projected right here. Now in OpenGL, you need to specify this view frustum. And to use it, you need to have certain parameters. Like you can see, uh, it'll have certain width and height and certain angle here. So you need to specify that. And so first, we'll start specifying the projection. So you, if you go into the reshape function, you, you'll see this glue auto 2D function that we call to set up a temporary 2D projection while we work with, working with the two, two dimensional objects. So we use this function. We, uh, we first change to the projection matrix and then we uh, made changes to the projection matrix using this function. So similar function used to set up a perspective projection is glue, sorry, glue perspective. The first argument is the field of view angle. Now, what is the field of view angle? I'll explain it to you here. So you can see this, uh, the angle between these two lines or these two lines, this is pretty much the same thing. This angle is called the field of view or FOV in short. Now you can usually keep it to 45 degrees or 60 degrees. That is quite usual uh, and it appears lifelike. So I'll use 60 degrees for field of view. And the next argument is the aspect ratio. Now aspect ratio is the ratio of this width and height. This is same throughout the frustum. 
because this first term is uniform um, so this this ratio is same throughout and you need to specify this ratio now we are using a square window in our program so it'll be convenient if you keep the ratio one because um, this first term should also have a um, square base if you uh, if the dimensions do not align like you have different ratio for your viewport and you have different ratio for your uh, view first term so the scene might appear stretched out uh, in a certain direction so that that is not uh, quite ideal so you have you've always got to keep the ratio of the window equal to the ratio equal to the expect ratio of your projection now the next argument is the z near and z far distance the next two arguments so the z near uh, distance is the distance of this near clip plane from the origin uh, it'll, this distance will always be positive um, the positive distance from the clip plane um, to the observer so we'll keep it 2 and the far clip plane you can keep it as large as you like but uh, it'll be convenient to not to keep it too large because if too many objects are drawn inside your scene this that might uh, result in performance issues of the computer so z near 2.0 and z far I'll keep 50.0 so any object drawn um, behind this uh, far clip pin will not be visible so now i'll uh, use the I use a diagram to demonstrate what was going on here so let's suppose this is our view first term now i cannot actually draw a 3d first term so i'll just use a triangle so this is the near plane and this is the far plane so this is the these are the negative coordinates here but the distance is always positive so uh, the near plane and far plane distance is always the positive distance from the origin to the plane so this was two units so this point is minus two and this point was uh, uh, the far plane distance was 50 units so this point is minus 50 on the z-axis negative z so all the objects between this region will be visible now this is a 3d system so this is a 3d region in which these are uh, visible so you can draw any object which lies between these frustum and they will be visible other objects will be clipped out of your uh, screen and the object that we currently have here if you map this geometry onto the coordinate system that we have here uh, it will be a square which is drawn at the origin so you can see it is it does not lie inside the view frustum so it will not be visible right now so for it to be visible you have to translate it to a point which uh, lies between the near and the far clip plane but for now let's just verify that uh, if this is visible or not if it is being drawn at the origin so the object is not visible and now if I translate it, it to a point which lies between the near and the far clip plane like minus 15 uh, now it should be visible so now if I build and run the program it will be visible and now um, you have uh, you should know that this is a perspective projection so the objects which are farther away will appear smaller and the objects which are nearer to the observer will appear bigger so we, you can just experiment it right now so this is our object at minus 15 and if I draw it at a uh, point uh, let's say minus 5 so this is nearer to the origin so this is nearer to the observer so it should appear bigger now so this will be verified by the output of the program right here you can try setting the distance to various values and you can check if this is uh, working or not. So this is definitely bigger than the output we had in the previous part. So the object is not changing its size. It's just changing its distance from the observer. Now you can actually use the animation code that we had in the previous part to translate it on the z-axis just like we did on the x-axis in the previous part so now the range of the variable it will go from minus uh, 5 let's say to minus 15 um, though the variable is called x position but we'll use it for the z-axis so this will be x position so now if you build and run this, uh, you should get an animating effect that the object is going away from you and then it is coming nearer. Uh, so another thing you need to know that we cannot yet work with 3D models like uh, you cannot draw a cube. Uh, because if I draw a cube, uh, only its front face will be visible to you. And the 
and the body of the cube behind that will be hidden so it will again appear as a square so uh, we can draw a 3d object and if you if you want to view it from different angles you need to first learn about rotation so we'll learn about rotation in one of the upcoming parts and then we'll um, draw 3d objects and then we'll be able to view it from the different angles so for now we'll just work with a 2d object inside 3d space so we had the uh, output that we needed um, so this is how the perspective projection is working you can um, try experimenting with multiple objects uh, inside your screen you can try uh, animating um, them uh, so you can also try uh, drawing the geometry of the cube at a different position um, that is really up to you if you want to do that uh, although we'll do that in one of the upcoming parts and another thing we'll need to learn about here will be the depth buffer um, that is actually a hidden su surface removal uh, like the objects which are behind certain objects will not be visible because the f object in the front hides the object behind objects behind it so that is actually not how OpenGL works by default it does not know that with which objects it has to hide and which it has to show so we'll learn in the next part how to enable depth testing with which um, always checks the object objects which are in the front and it always hides the objects which are behind certain objects so that will be covered in the next part and uh, with that we'll also cover the orthographic projection in the next part and after that we'll uh, start with rotation and we'll draw the 3d objects so that was all for this video and i hope to see you next time